In 2022, a group of researchers from the University of Hull in the UK published an article that shocked researchers all over the world. For the first time, tiny plastic particles had been found deep in the lungs of living people. Samples were taken from 13 patients undergoing surgery and microplastics were found in most cases. Two previous studies had already demonstrated the presence of many microplastics in the lungs of dead people. But this was the first solid study to demonstrate that most of us have tiny plastic particles in our lungs. The study was particularly concerning because the researchers found the highest number of particles in the lower regions of the lungs, from where the microplastics might move into the blood. You can imagine your lungs as your own air purifiers. Your lungs absorb oxygen and then deliver it to all parts of your body through the bloodstream, ensuring every cell thrives and functions. Yet, the fact that microplastics have been found deep in the lungs shows that they are unable to trap microplastics before getting so deep, where airways are smaller. It is surprising as the airways are smaller in the lower parts of the lungs, and we would have expected particles of these sizes to be filtered out or trapped before getting this deep said Laura Sadowski, the senior author of the study. It is estimated that up to 16 bits of microplastics enter our lungs every hour. This is the equivalent to 5 grams per week, the weight of a credit card. But where do these particles come from? What is the impact on our health? And what are possible solutions? In 2021, researchers from Utah University estimated that, at any given time, over 2 million pounds or 0.9 million kilograms of microplastics are flying above the western United States. Microplastics enter our lungs through the air we breathe that has been contaminated due to widespread road transport, plastic use, and plastic pollution. As author Matt Simon puts it, Earth's atmosphere hasn't just grown saturated with plastic. Plastic is now a fundamental component of the air. Since the 60s, the rate of plastic production has grown faster than that of any other material. In just 65 years, plastic production has increased by over 18,000%. However, of the 7 billion tons of plastic that have been produced globally so far, less than 10% have actually been recycled. In other words, billions of tons of plastics have been lost to the environment by being burned or dumped. It is estimated that 22% of plastic waste ends up in the air, forests, oceans, rivers, or other water supplies. But how exactly microplastics end up suspended in the air and eventually inhaled by humans? What are the specific sources? The erosion of tires on roads generates many tiny particles that are released into the air. Again, in 2021, researchers from Utah University found that at any given time, over 2 million pounds of microplastics were flying above the western United States. Of that, they estimated that 84% came from roads in the area. As Janice Bravney, one of the researchers from Utah University, put it, Cars driving on roads provide that mechanical energy to move particles really high into the atmosphere. These particles are so tiny that they can easily be picked up by the wind and end up in places far from where they originated. That's why the rates of microplastics are particularly high at mountaintops, which means long-distance travel. And that's what explains that these tiny particles can be found and inhaled everywhere, even far from urban centers and highways. Microplastics have been found in many remote areas from the Arctic to the Alps. In 2021, for instance, researchers found microplastics in the Vatnajökull ice cap in Iceland, one of the most remote places on Earth. In 2023, they were also found in the Svalbard Islands, Norway. It was startling. I wasn't expecting to find as much as we did. Recently said a scientist who led a study about the ubiquity of microplastics in the environment. Microplastics were found everywhere in nature, from Mount Everest to Arctic ice or the ocean depths. 11,000 meters down the Mariana Trench. Beyond roads, other sources of microplastics in the air are plastic pollution, synthetic clothes, and care products that include microplastics. Synthetic clothing, for instance, is responsible for endless amounts of microfibers, which end up everywhere in the environment and in our bodies. Researchers have also recently found that plastic pollution in the oceans doesn't just stay there. Plastic products erode into millions of tiny plastic particles. Many of these microplastics end up being picked up by the wind 
and transported to other places. Of course, these particles can then be inhaled by humans. In March 2024, a new study came out. This landmark study directly linked microplastics to serious health problems. The study found that people who had tiny plastic particles in a blood vessel were 4.5 times more likely to experience heart attacks, strokes or death within three years than those who didn't. Scientists have been worried about the health effects of microplastics for years, but this is something that takes years to evaluate. In fact, the long-term health impacts of microplastics are still not fully understood, but it doesn't look good. It is expected that microplastics cause serious damage to the organs and cells they penetrate. For instance, experiments in the lab have shown that microplastics cause damage to human cells. This is particularly worrisome because microplastics can absorb and transport different types of pollutants or bacteria, which are then introduced into the body along with the microplastic. In a way, microplastics are like Trojan forces in our bodies. Deep into the lungs, these tiny particles can also cause an inflammation of the respiratory system. While lungs have mechanisms to remove larger particles, these particles are so tiny that they can evade our body's natural defenses. Studies now show that extended exposure to microplastics can result in respiratory illnesses such as asthma and pneumoconiosis. There are also reasons to believe that microplastics could induce lung cancer, because studies have shown higher concentrations of microplastics in the lungs of people that died of lung cancer than in the lungs of people that died because of other reasons. Researchers have also observed that people employed in the manufacture of synthetic clothes, clothes made with plastic, have higher rates of lung diseases. So our lungs and our health are at risk because of microplastics. Microplastics have been found deep in human lungs, blood, and even breast milk. They have also been found in many everyday foods and drinks such as water, beer, shellfish, and salt. Microplastics have contaminated the entire planet from the summit of Mount Everest to the deepest oceans. Yet, it seems that we are dragging our feet when it comes to tackling the problem, and more generally, reducing plastic pollution. To tackle the issue of microplastics, we need a dramatic reduction of plastic use. We are talking of products such as bags, cutlery, or bottles. We need to end the addiction of fast fashion, the addiction to toxic synthetic clothing. Personal care products with microplastics should be regulated or directly banned. We also need measures to reduce road transport and reduce the generation of microplastics from tires. The presence of microplastics in our lungs is a stark reminder of the pervasive impact of plastic pollution on our health and the environment. Our lungs and bodies are at risk because of microplastics. As we continue to research and understand this issue, it becomes increasingly clear that we need urgent actions to reduce plastic use and plastic pollution.